epoxidation, anti-dihydroxylation, or syn dihydroxylation. Those will be the topics of this lesson, and we'll find out we can convert an alkene into an epoxide with a peracid or peroxy acid, MCPBA, which is the most famous example of. Uh, we can also then open up that epoxide by following up with uh, H3O+, which will hydrolyze it, leading to anti-dihydroxylation. Finally, we can do syn dihydroxylation with one of a couple of different reagents, either involving osmium tetroxide or potassium permanganate. Now, this lesson's part of my new organic chemistry playlist. I'll be releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't want to miss one, subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification, you'll be notified every time I post a new lesson. The next alkene addition reactions we'll look at are kind of come as a pair, epoxidation and anti-dihydroxylation. And it turns out that anti-dihydroxylation, the first step is epoxidation. And so the first is really part of the second, but you might see it independent as well. Uh, so it turns out the reagent here is going to be a, what's called a peroxy acid or simply a per acid. So it kind of looks like a carboxylic acid with one too many oxygens. I've got one drawn out here. So notice it's got three oxygens here instead of normal two. And that oxygen oxygen single bond is a rather weak bond. So just kind of governed in this reaction. So uh, explaining the reactivity. So uh, if you just add a peroxy acid, so you get the epoxide. Now, one thing you should know is that the most, uh, the most common peroxy acid is called metachloroperoxybenzoic acid. And it's just a special, turns out, peroxy acid. So we've got benzoic peroxy acid and metachloro. That is MCPBA. I like to think of it as a Canadian who likes peanut butter. Me crave peanut butter, eh? And so the truth is you're more likely to see MCPBA written out as an abbreviation than just to see generically, you know, a peroxy acid or to see it drawn out or anything like that. So uh, MCPBA is the most common form, but technically you could see it any one of these ways. So I want to make sure you, you recognize all of them. So uh, cool. If you just add a peroxy acid, you get the epoxide. Cool. Done. And notice you don't actually add two things. You just add a single oxygen. And so that's why it's hard to say, what's, what are the two groups added? Well, you just get one. And also since both carbons here of the alkene, or what used to be the alkene, are bonded to the same atom, they have to be added on the same side. And so it's a syn addition. And since we're only adding one thing, there's definitely no like who's bonded to what kind of regio uh, selectivity to talk about. No more Kovnikov or Antimor Kovnikov kind of thing. Now, it turns out if you take this epoxide and add H3O plus to it, so it, it carries out what we call acid catalyzed ring opening and epoxide, uh, a reaction we'll you know, study in greater depth in second semester. Uh, and in this case, you end up with an OH on both sides. So one of these OHs was the O of the epoxide, and another one comes from the water in H3O plus. So, and because we're adding two of the same thing on both sides and OH on both sides, so again, there'll be no, you know, Markovnikov or Antimarkovnikov, no regio uh, selectivity to talk about. So, but it is going through a three membered ring. And so we'll be doing backside attack on an sp3 carbon, which will lead to anti addition. And that's why the two OHs end up trans to each other in this case. Cool. In the second example, we did form two chiral centers and with two chiral centers. So we had to worry about our stereo selectivity, which was anti. And in this case, only got the two anti products, both trans. So a pair of enantiomers in this case. All right. So let's take a look at the mechanism a little bit. So if we take a look, I've lined up our alkene and our peroxy acid here. And first step, our alkene is the nucleophile, as we expect. And we're going to come and attack... So that oxygen right there. So, but this bond is going to break this bond between oxygen and hydrogen back so that the oxygen ends up bonded to both carbons of the alkene. Simultaneously, as we attack that oxygen, this bond breaks, forming a double bond there. And this bond is used to make a bond to the hydrogen instead. And so what we end up with is one, our epoxide. And again, whether these are both wedged bonds or both dash bonds, it is exactly the same thing. And then we're going to end up with just a plain old carboxylic acid. So this carbon here is going to have a double bond to this oxygen. This will now be a single bond to an O that now has an H, and it'll be a carboxylic acid. Cool. So there's the epoxidation step. The second step is the acid catalyzed ring opening with H3O+. So let's see how that plays out. So and this takes a couple of steps. So and it turns out the first step, so it's taking place in acid, is that we actually protonate the epoxide first. 
We'll do that with our H3O plus. Cool, and with a protonated epoxide, it is actually a much better electrophile than had it not been deprotonated. And so, I'm sorry, not been protonated. So, and these two carbons are sharing the partial positive charge, and now they have even more partial positive charge now that the oxygen's even more withdrawing, having a positive formal charge. Cool, and now water's just gonna come to backside attack. So if it mattered, typically we like to say that it would attack the more substituted one, but I just kind of left it here alone and I'll treat that in a little more detail in second semester. So, but water's gonna come and do backside attack there, which is why it ends up on the opposite side. And as we've seen already a few times this chapter, when a neutral nucleophile attacks, it ends up with a positive formal charge and you'll come and deprotonate it with another molecule of whoever your solvent is, which in this case is water. And that gets us to our final product here. And a molecule of hydronium. Cool. So when you've got these two OHs here, we call that dihydroxylation, adding two hydroxyl groups. And in this case, we call it anti-dihydroxylation because they end up on opposite faces of the molecule. So, and that's important because we're about to cover syn dihydroxylation, where you end up adding two OHs and they end up cis to each other on a ring like this. They add to the same face rather than opposite. All right, the last of our alkene addition reactions here is gonna be syn dihydroxylation. We actually have two different sets of reagents that can pull this off. So we've got osmium tetroxide followed by either sodium bisulfite or sodium sulfite. So, or potassium permanganate, and we say cold and dilute under basic conditions. And the reason we have to say cold and dilute is because if it's hot and concentrated, it actually does a different reaction. Uh, and in this case, we add two OHs across the alkene, so dihydroxylation, but this time notice they're on the same side. They add to the same face. And we typically don't require students to know the mechanism for this and stuff like that. However, we often show you the major intermediates involved. With osmium tetroxide, you get a cyclic osmate ester. With potassium permanganate, you get a cyclic manganate ester. And the idea is you can see why these two oxygens, which are the ones for the product in either case, so you can see why they have to end up being cis to each other into the same face because they come from the same molecule of OSO4 or MNO4 minus in either case. Cool. So like I said, don't have to know the mechanism here, but I did want to show the intermediates to explain why it ends up being a syn addition. One last thing I want to point out here is that where we added the two OHs, they both are chiral centers. And when you form two, two chiral centers, that's where your stereoselectivity matters. And so in this case, being a syn addition, so we had to show the OHs as both wedges or both dashes. But in this case, look at that plane of symmetry. This molecule is achiral. It's a meso compound. And whether you make them both wedges or both dashes, it's the same thing. And once again, we expected two products with two chiral centers and syn addition, we're only getting one due to actual formation of a, uh, a meso compound in this case. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, consider giving me a like and a share, a couple of the best things you can do to help promote the channel. And if you're looking for the study guide that went with this lesson, or if you're looking for practice problems for alkene addition reactions, check out my premium courses on chadsprep.com.